Hello! <laughs> Thank you so much Glenn and Yael for having me and letting me do this live stream and the whole team at Adapt for Life. Uh, it's actually my very first time doing this so uh, it's very exciting. It's probably hopefully not going to be the last. Uh, but yeah, thanks so much for, for asking me to talk about my work and share my story and hopefully inspire some of you to dive into some more research. So my name is Patricia Daly. I'm a nutritional therapist based in Dublin in Ireland and it's St. Patrick's Day today. So happy St. Patrick's Day to all the Irish listening and watching. I'm probably going to go to one of the smaller parades in the afternoon because the big one in town is always a bit overwhelming for my two kids. So we're probably going to go to one of the smaller ones. So yeah, uh, what what do I do and why am I here? Uh, it's interesting, I'm a nutritional therapist, but uh, it's more interesting why I'm a nutritional therapist rather than what I am. Uh, I came to this uh, through vocation and through basically the fact that I was diagnosed with cancer in 2008 when I was only 28. Uh, I have a tumour, a malignant melanoma in the eyeball and I also had one outside the eye and uh, did my conventional treatments and uh, very shortly afterwards, after finishing the treatment, I started studying nutritional therapy because I think for a lot of cancer patients, um, they do want to do something um, tangible to help themselves and uh, I think the feeling in control a little bit more afterwards because treatment is just yeah it's it's all a, a big daze it's like being in a in a dream and hoping to wake up at some point soon uh, which unfortunately in my case didn't happen but um, basically I did do my conventional treatments and afterwards I asked my oncologist so is there anything I can do and just a little bit of control back and being from Switzerland I'm very used to complementary therapies and uh, nutrition uh, homeopathy has a big tradition naturopathy so for me that was one of the first things that uh, came to my mind and my oncologist said no basically there's there's not much you can do you just go back and you relax a little bit and you go back to your old life which clearly wasn't what I wanted and that's what you know got me into this research mode and I decided very quickly afterwards that I wanted to start studying nutritional therapy it's tangible you can control what you put in your mouth what you eat what you drink and of course also our thoughts that's another aspect and uh, I started studying, made a lot of changes, but unfortunately very quickly afterwards, not even two years later, I had a relapse. So same story again. I went for a conventional treatment again, was promised that this time it would be a different type of uh, radiotherapy. It was proton beam therapy, very aggressive, very effective. And again, it did work for a while, but then uh, the tumour came back again, or it was there were signs of activity again in 2012. We weren't 100% sure what was going on. Uh, there was a lot of growing of um, excessive blood vessels. I had a lot of side effects um, like oedema, um, radiotherapy related retinopathy, um, some glaucoma and cataract. So you name it basically. So that's when I basically opted for the option of um, ketogenic diet. So I had started researching it back in 2010 and was always, I ran it by my consultant, he said, look, don't do anything extreme at the moment, let's just see how it goes and just keep yourself well. But we came to a point in 2012 where he said, okay, you know, I give you a few weeks, you can do it. We always, uh, we can do a vaccine injections down the line if it gets completely out of control. I mean, the situation was a little bit out of control, but not enough that I wasn't allowed to have a few weeks to test the ketogenic diet or the other option would have been to take the eye out. And I started then uh, based on research from uh, Dr. Coy in Germany and also uh, Professor Kammer also in Germany and uh, a lot of the you know keto gurus uh, at the time weren't online, they weren't that big, there wasn't that much information and I pretty much just delved into it. I had researched it well, I knew what I was doing. Uh, I was a qualified nutritional therapist at that point after three and a half years of training. Um, but still, it was a lot of um, things that I just had to figure out and that were really challenging. 
but I got results really, really quickly because of my uh, the nature of my tumour. It's in the eye, so we can actually look into it and see how the tumour behaves, see what happens in the environment. So I was very, very lucky that this was just such an easy tumour to monitor and to see if um, whatever I was doing was having an effect. And the effect was really visible and drastic. So my consultant basically said it looks like the calm after a big storm. And ever since then, really, things have been calm, touch wood. And uh, I also managed to get rid of a tumour that had uh, my tumour inside the eye had spread to the outside of the eye. And uh, that tumour is completely gone now. And I'm working as, as best as I can. It was a, it was a large tumour in the eye. It was about 18 millimetres, so that is pretty big. And uh, so it takes a while for the, the tissue now to basically leave the eye. So that is my story and you can probably understand why um, I am very passionate about the subject. Uh, I believe in the power of the ketogenic diet but, <laughs> that's a big, big but, there are a few caveats. So please don't consider the ketogenic diet or indeed a low carb approach as an alternative for cancer treatment. It is not an alternative. Um, we need a lot more studies to see what exactly the place is of the ketogenic diet. Fact is there is lots of research going on into the ketogenic diet and how we can enhance um, treatment, so chemotherapy and also radiotherapy and also how we can reduce side effects and I think that's what we really have to focus on at the moment it's very exciting for me it was a little bit of a different approach because I had done all my uh, conventional treatment I didn't know at the time uh, when I was doing conventional treatment I didn't know about um, low carb and keto but for anybody who is in the know now talk to your uh, professional team medical team talk to your oncologist and don't do this on your own and as well um, you do sometimes hear out there that you know the science into the ketogenic diet it's clear and we know exactly you know that you hear this thing sugar feeds cancer all the time it's it really is a gross oversimplification it's one of you know one of the aspects and one of the mechanisms by which the ketogenic diet can help but there's so much more to it and there's so much research going into it at the moment and we have quite a bit of preclinical uh, studies, preclinical research and uh, case study based and we also have all the data from the epilepsy world that the ketogenic diet is safe but the human clinical randomized control trials, they are ongoing and we do not have those results. So I'm always a bit cautious when people say, I oh, know it's a no brainer. We still have to find the exact place that the ketogenic diet has in cancer treatment. And it's really important for patients to be aware of this, really get informed and uh, get support. Uh, and, and then, you know, it's definitely a very valid option because I did a lot of research into nutrition and cancer and basically, you know, my conclusion was we simply do not have any randomized control trials into any approach, not even what um, what is being advised in, in hospitals to some extent. It's really based on the food pyramid and when you look at ESPEN guidelines, for instance, that were issued in 2016, the evidence across the board for food and uh, nutrition and cancer is unfortunately very low to low and that's what I so want to change I really want to I would love more research and more money going into research and really getting the hang of how to best um, design those trials as well that's the the other big thing it's it's not just a drug it's so much more there's so much more to it it's so much more complex to monitor and implement and um, see the effects of a dietary approach. And so for, for anybody who wonders now, so what actually do you eat um, all day long? And uh, uh, are you still on a strict ketogenic diet? So people ask me a lot. And <clears throat> that's why we probably have to differentiate a little bit. Um, basically that, you know, going in ketosis is not the same as being fat adapted. And uh, I think as, as time goes on, people become more and more 
used to burning fat as their preferred uh, fuel source. So there's a bit of a difference um, between going into short-term ketosis. You know, many people in the morning, they might be in ketosis and produce ketone bodies, but it doesn't mean that uh, the majority of their cells preferably use fat all, you know, most of the time as um, the preferred and um, uh, the, the you know the the most important fuel so that's that's the difference so being fat adapted really means your body uses predominantly um, fat and being in ketosis can be just producing ketone bodies but it doesn't necessarily mean being fat adapted and what I have noticed over time is that um, I am a lot more flexible now that's this metabolic flexibility I do have a little bit more carbs mainly also because I exercise a lot more again uh, but, but when when I had cancer I was going through treatment it, it was much more um, a passive lifestyle than it is now I also have two kids that I'm running around uh, with a lot and or running after <laughs> rather so uh, it is it has changed my diet definitely has changed over time and uh, it used to be very, very strict at the beginning. And I went down to 12 grams uh, of net carbs a day, which is uh, for anybody who has a bit of experience is very, very little. And uh, so the main source of carbs when you're on a strict ketogenic diet is non-starchy vegetables. And so that could, for instance, be celery, um, green leafy vegetables and mushrooms, cucumbers, um, a bit of pepper and uh, you know all, all those that the, the vegetables that are not starchy like the pumpkins or the sweet potatoes so that's the main source of, of carbs and it's it's very low and I also have a bit of cacao powder for instance I make my own chocolate and uh, you know there's trace traces of carbs in other foods but that's really pretty much it and then protein and that's the, the big difference to, for instance, Atkins that a lot of people ask uh, about. Uh, protein is, is very moderate as well. I mean, that depends a little bit. Again, um, I can't stand when people ask questions and I say, I, it depends, but quite often that is the case. So if somebody goes through treatment or has any immune system uh, issues is struggling with say uh, keeping white blood cells up you really need to carefully monitor protein to get that balance uh, but for some people who really use the, the ketogenic diet um, then after treatment as well and to uh, you know get into deep ketosis in, in the initial stages protein definitely has to be pretty limited as well and uh, my favorite protein sources are an oily fish and also a bit of um, uh, organ meat. I love organ meat. I have a little bit of red meat, muscle meat, maybe once or twice a week, but it's it's really not that much. Um, but I think it's important to have some and uh, and then eggs, all types of eggs, uh, duck eggs and um, <clears throat> hen's eggs and quail. So there's lots of variety there as well. So protein definitely has to be evenly spread over the day as well and definitely not be um, consumed in, in excess and that then has a, a big impact as well in combination with the carb restriction on growth factors and I think that's the other really nice um, thing about the ketogenic diet how it targets so many potential growth uh, pathways that are involved in cancer like for instance insulin, insulin like growth factor 1, um, mTOR and um, I think this is one of the things that is probably, probably even more important than glucose, um, you know, glucose levels dropping. And that's why I said, you know, uh, sugar feeds cancer. It is an oversimplification. There's so much more going on when somebody is fat adapted and in ketosis. Also, you know, producing the ketone bodies. And um, that has been shown to have potential anti-tumor effects as well. And then in my case, I very we actually saw how antigenesis reduced. So that's a big thing for cancer patients. That's a, one of the major hallmarks um, of cancer. It's the, the growth of excess blood vessels to feed the tumor. And, uh, and there's also impacts on epigenetic expression. Um, edema, I saw, I saw a big effect on, on my edema. Uh, my, my vision came back as well. So neurological functions um, really tend to uh, improve on, on a ketogenic diet and that's why it's being looked at from a Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, epilepsy um, angle as well. 
So uh, just to finish up on <laughs> what I eat, then the fats obviously are very important and some people think I just, you know, drink coconut oil or drink olive oil and uh, or just put everything, put butter on everything. That's not quite the case. Um, uh, I definitely eat uh, a lot more fat than I used to, of course. But again, I also found that that has adjusted a little bit over time. And uh, I really prefer to eat fat from whole foods, like from avocados or olives, or again, as I said, the oily fish. And uh, of course I use, um, you know, all the fats for cooking as well, but it's not that I add masses of fat all the time to my food. Um, it can make sense in some cases, but in my case, at what stage I am now, it does not make sense anymore. So that's pretty much um, it, sort of in a, in a, in a very, very um, uh, simplified nutshell. Uh, that's what uh, my journey has been. Uh, what I do now, actually, yeah, that's an interesting point as well. I actually wrote a book uh, last year was published it was it's the ketogenic kitchen with my co-author Dominic Kemp so that was a big project that took us uh, two and a half years to get that book together and uh, really kept me on my toes uh, on two th in 2016 and what I do now as well is I mean my focus is really just to make this as simple and easy as possible for people and give people as much support as possible because one of the things you always um, hear one of the big sort of cons um, that, that people say why they're not considering or doing a ketogenic diet is it's too hard and I would like to change that and I know you guys in Adapt Your Life are um, it's very similar um, so I am developing an app as well I'm developing a really amazing um, membership for both practitioners and patients and uh, I start to sort of slowly but surely see um, clients again I had to put that on hold uh, for a good while last year simply because it was just too busy but I am starting to get back into that and it's it's very exciting so lots going on and I'm very excited with you know all the research that's coming out as well and uh, I keep a totally open mind I know it's worked beautifully for me it's worked beautifully for uh, you know a, a good amount of my my clients but uh, it's like anything in life it doesn't suit everybody and uh, it's not for everyone uh, so my my mission is really just to get the information out there keep on top of the science and also just really translate the science into so okay what do we eat now so I think there's constantly this bridging this gap you know translating uh, the, the science into daily life and uh, I could go on and on so what I use as well you know lifestyle wise to enhance ketosis that's one of my other big passions where I do a lot of um, uh, trialing on myself and uh, what works best and how I can best um, protect myself from another relapse and um, keep as healthy as possible and uh, I'd like to inspire you to do the same and uh, find find your tribe, find your community and follow the people that inspire you and keep you on your toes and uh, thanks so much for listening. I have no clue how much I've been on, <laughs> how, how long I've been on, but uh, I'm going to head off now and celebrate St. Patrick's Day. And I wish you a, a glorious day and uh, a really uh, great weekend. I hope you get to relax a bit and uh, do some nice activities. And uh, I'll talk to you soon. Bye.